of normal. Chandrayaan 3 has started its journey towards moon. So let me wish all the very best to Chandrayaan 3 for its further journey towards moon. The entire nation is feeling proud about it. Also because as we look forward to the next 25 years, the Ramadit Kalb in India would be reaching a pedestal. I think this heralds the beginning of that, the ascent of that. Hello and welcome to this News 18 special. India has successfully launched its lunar mission Chandrayaan-3 from the launch pad to here at Sri Harikota at Satish Dhawan Space Center. It's a crucial mission for India and ISRO. And here at News 18, we'll break down the mission map on how ISRO will go about this and also what it means for India's space journey. The moment India was waiting for. One, zero. Here we have a majestic liftoff of LBM 3 M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. At 2.35 pm, the Bahubali rocket LBM 3 successfully launched Chandrayaan 3 into the air from Sriharikota, leaving an indelible mark in the hearts of a billion Indians. The LVM-3 M4 rocket, the largest and heaviest in its class, dubbed as Fat Boy, lifted off majestically from the second launch pad, discharging thick plumes of smoke. A moment of glory for the nation. The mission achieved a perfect start with Chandrayaan in the precise orbit. The Vikram lander of the mission is expected to soft land on the surface of the South Pole region of the Moon around the 23rd of August at 5.47 p.m. This is India's third lunar mission consisting of an indigenous lander module, propulsion module and a rover with the objective of developing and demonstrating new technologies required for interplanetary missions. The main goal of Chandrayaan-3 is to land the rover on the lunar surface on the 23rd of August. The new mission aims to demonstrate India's capability to safely land and explore the lunar surface. The dream run of India's ambitious second lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, ended in tragedy on the 7th of September 2019, as ISRO lost contact with the spacecraft's lander, Vikram. Among various scientific experiments that ISRO plans to have, many of them, will be by payloads that are on the rover and as well as on the lander. This will focus on the lunar surface. It will look at aspects like the thermal and plasma activity on the surface, seismic activity. Also, it will look at the components that are part of the lunar surface, whether it has magnesium, calcium, aluminium, and all these other components. This, ISRO believes, will play a crucial role in further missions and how Moon perhaps might become a launch pad for further exploration of space. If there is a seismic activity on the moon, that will also give... A, today there is some understanding about what, what the, uh, the core of the moon is like, how is the rock structure in the moon like, some understanding is there. If there is a moon quake, then it is going to give a completely different idea about the, uh, the structure of moon. That is why there is an interest in finding out even there are very mild tremors in the moon surface. That is why this moon came. As India awaits glory, a successful mission would see the country enter an elite club of nations achieving such a feat. The others being the United States, China and the erstwhile USSR. ISRO has called it a textbook launch and is positive of a good soft landing on August 23rd. This, the ISRO believes, will have a very good impact on the future of India's space journey. Successful launch, hopefully a successful soft landing. How important is it for India's space journey, sir? I think it's important for more than one way. A, that 
as you see, also, the entire nation is feeling proud about it. Also because as we look forward to the next 25 years, that Amrit Kalwin in India would be reaching a place. I think this heralds the beginning of that, the ascent of that. Secondly, even though we started our space journey late through this Chandrayaan series, who got the evidence of water being present on the surface of moon, and this uh, particular mission. And most of all, the scenario that you see, guys like you, friends like you are here, Siri Harikota, just yes. standing next to the launch uh, site. Right. Now, this till about four years back, this was hardly uh, imaginable, yes. because this was functioning on behind a wheel of secrecy. <laughs> and I think no words will be sufficient to thank Prime Minister Modi. Final question on a day like this, the Congress coming out and saying, well, it's the contribution of uh, Indira Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi that can't be discounted. How do you see that, I think, sir? I think the media should uh, themselves ask themselves and respond to it. Was media ever allowed into the Sri Hari Kota campus during Mrs. Gandhi's time or during Rajiv Gandhi? See, there are thousands of media persons here, close to the launch site. You have the huge presence of industry over here. Yeah. You have virtually every section of society, students, you have uh, industrialists, you have academicians. Because it was Prime Minister Modi who four years back took a very path-breaking decision, breaking the taboos of the past, he, he opened it up to wider participation. And that has borne fruits. This Chandrayaan mission also has uh, gained value because there's a huge lot of contribution from the non-government sources. Mm. So now as India is a part of the global uh, world and we have and we saw it for ourselves a global role, I think the demarcation between uh, public, private and uh, other sectors has to be done away. We have all to work with synergy and this is also an evidence of synergized working which we see here today. A successful launch. What are the challenges for the next three or four weeks, sir? Till August 23rd, which is a tentative. You heard, already, you heard already what is going to happen further. Yeah. We are going to raise orbit from now to transcellular injection condition <coughs> and that will happen over some four burn sequences which will be very timed and controlled and if everything goes well on 1st of August we will be leaving 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 earth and going towards moon it's called transcellular injection hmm. after that it cannot come back okay. then it will start a journey towards moon and uh, that is the first step after that it will be cap it will travel another four days to reach moon then it will be captured on the moon by an appropriate firing if you hmm. don't fire that correct time it will escape moon also yes. yeah. so then uh, we will be reducing orbit in the next three four burns to bring it up to 100 km. And everything goes well, then we'll be able to land on 30, 23rd or 24th August on the moon. So the other aspect here is a uh, lot of people are curious to know why ISRO has uh, chosen this spot for soft landing, the one that you've tentatively chosen. See, it, it goes with many things. One, it has a spot where there is still illumination. There are still adjacent zones which are non-illuminated. Okay. So both are there. So if you want to do scientific experiments, you can go to the unilluminated zone and do some mineral studies. Mm -hmm. And an illuminator zone is suitable for solar power generation so that our craft can live for at least 15 days. Hmm. So this is the interest. So it is not clo close to the pole but slightly ne near to the pole to give some scientific value. Hmm. So I know you don't want to digress to any other project but how important is this mission for Gaganyan and other missions? Sir, you spoke about the launch vehicle and the capacity and the kind of features of it that will help you in Gaganyan. See, we are using LVM3 for uh, all these missions and systematically operating it to reach the Gaganyan goal. Hmm. See, you would have seen the last three launches were successful. Uh, though they were not part of the Gaganyan program, we have inducted, inducted many, many features which are part of the Gaganyan program so as to give edge to that mission. So that one, ultimately, when you go to Gaganyan, we don't have to have an uncertain rocket. Okay. That's Sir, final question. On the, shape, on the shape equipment that you put there, uh, people want to know uh, what's the idea behind uh, some equipment on a moon orbit looking at Earth. Because all your other payloads, payloads are on the surface of moon. If you yeah. have to measure, study Earth, you can very well study here. You yeah. don't have to go to moon. Yeah. But we are not looking at like that. We are hmm. looking at, suppose somebody looks at another planet. Hmm. What is the type of a global st structure of the in, uh, radiation that you are receiving? Hmm. From this, can you make a signature? So we are looking at a global signature that can distinguish between a living planet and a non-living planet. Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh, respected Chairman, our mentors and the dignitaries present here, and the entire ISRO family, we have a very successful launch and hearty congratulations to all the LUM3, M4, and Chandrayaan 3 mission. So, once again, the fat boy has done its job and put a very precisely the other prestigious lunar mission, Chandrayaan 3, in the transfer orbit. And I congratulate the SDC Shark team. Yes, throughout this launch, we had uh, many launch campaigns of C-55 and 56. Along with that, we are proud to have this in spite of the weather conditions here. 
we have successfully launched LVM3 in, in the prescribed launch window time between July 12th and 19th. <clears throat> and we had a very good smooth campaign here and all the hot congratulations to the entire launch vehicle team as well as for the last two months for hosting the Chandrayaan 3 team here and carrying out all the tests to make sure that Chandrayaan 3 is also ready for the mission. And I also thank our entire logistics team who handled this huge crowd throughout this campaign period, in particular, last two, three days. And I, my sincere thanks to the various Indian industries who are now participating in various aspects of solid motor processing as well as the assembly activities of our launch vehicle to make it successful. And I wish you a glorious success in the future to come. And I wish, as mentioned in the last week of August, to have a successful soft landing of Chandrayaan 3 lander on the moon surface and to make history. Once again, thank you. Jai Hind. Well, Chandrayaan 3 has several interesting aspects to it. Here's a quick roundup of all that. Here are five facts about Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 3 is a continuation of India's previous lunar mission, Chandrayaan 2, which ended in failure and tears. The objective is to demonstrate India's capability of soft landing on the moon by delivering a lander and a rover to the lunar surface. During Chandrayaan 2, the lander crash-landed during descent due to a technical failure. India will be hoping to join an elite list of nations who have actually managed to land on the moon, that is the United States, erstwhile Soviet Union and China. The actual launch vehicle Mark III is a three-stage medium-lift launch vehicle. Christened as the Bahubali of rockets, it's the most powerful rocket ever developed by ISRO. This is what will be used to launch the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. LVM-3 consists of two solid fuel boosters and a liquid fuel core stage powering it. The solid fuel boosters provide the initial thrust, while the liquid fuel core stage provides the sustained thrust to propel the rocket into orbit. The spacecraft consists of three parts the lander module, the propulsion module, and a rover. The integrated spacecraft weighs around 3,900 kgs. The main function of the propulsion module is to carry the lander module from launch vehicle injection till the final lunar 100 km circular polar orbit and separate it. The lander will make a soft landing at a specific site on the moon and deploy the rover. The rover, in turn, will carry out chemical analysis of the lunar surface. The rover will be moving only within a limited range, that is, within the sight of the lander's cameras. All data collected by the rover will be transmitted first to the rover and then to the orbiter and then back to Earth. ISRO is targeting a soft landing sometime in the middle of August. Landing dates are determined based on the availability of sunlight at a particular landing spot. ISRO has designed the Chandrayaan-3 lander and rover to function for 14 Earth days, which amounts to one lunar day. After that, it will be a period of 14 Earth days of darkness at the landing site. So the rover and lander will not be able to recharge their batteries during that period. While there have been several moon landings, Chandrayaan-3 will be the first to land on the south pole of the moon. So a successful landing of Chandrayaan-3 on the moon's south pole will be a demonstration of our technical prowess and spacefaring ambitions. The lunar south pole has long held the interest of scientists and space experts because there is a possibility of presence of water there. The rocks and soil in this region could provide clues to the early solar system. This will be the first time that any test would be conducted on the South Pole, so any data and conclusions drawn are set to be studied keenly across the world. 
Even during this momentous occasion, ISRO is quick to point out and recognize the kind of hard work that has been put by generations of scientists and thank them. At the same time, all the retired and former scientists too are extremely happy with the kind of development that's happened here with the launch and they too are hoping for a successful landing. You are very confident that uh, the takeoff and the journey is not the issue. Uh, seems like things are going according to plan for Chandrayaan 3. As I see it, now the, the remaining things are routine. Hmm. Getting into elliptical orbit and then the circular orbit, of, uh, then getting into the moon, moon, uh, you know, lunar orbit, etc. The most important point will come only on 23rd or 24th of August when we are going to make an attempt to make a soft landing. So till then, things are routine and normal. I think we may have not many things to talk about in this period. Hmm. Yes, these are routine things which will continue to be taking place. So we will have to see at the, at the launch or at the, at the descent mode of the module. But, but That's it, what I, I, I feel. But, but I'm just, I'm also proud, uh, Nambi sir, from a common man's point of view that scientists like you and Indian ISRO is taking takeoff and the journey up to the moon as normalized, as something which you've already done. There are nations which have not been able to get a rocket to take off. And we are saying take off and the journey is all right. We just need to now focus on the landing. Yeah, sure. We are, we are proud of our job and we know for sure that things will work. As I told you, I once again repeat that I am only waiting for the descent. It is time to celebrate and then take rest. Well, one thing, Nambi sir, if you could explain to our viewers, the L-10 separation and the cryogenic firing, 3C25, there was huge applause. Why is that considered a critical stage? Uh, is, is it complicated to get the cryogenics firing? No, earlier there was a problem with the cryogenics, so they were... Yeah, see, you know, this applause and all the mood of the crowd. Hmm. And uh, some of the activities they may consider more critical and more important, so hmm. they, they are happy about it. The landing part this time, we are given to understand they have added more sensors. The coding, the writing of the program has been more and the landing gear has been made robust. Uh, can you take us uh, through what perhaps is the most significant learning from the last time around, from C2 to C3, with respect to the landing? No, I'm not going to go into details. I'm going to say that these problems which arose out of the software as well as the mechanical problems were taken care. Time for a quick break now. On the other side, we'll get you more details on Chandrayaan 3 and how it could be a game changer for India's space program.